Welcome to the continuation of Module 2 of the Elliott Wave Vertical. This module is about impulsive patterns. In the previous learning object, we learned about impulsive wave structure, impulse and diagonal wave characteristics, and rules and guidelines of impulsive waves. In this learning object, we will learn about mathematical applications and projections and targets. The person who makes a success of living is the one who sees his goal steadily and aims for it unswervingly. That is dedication. Cecil B. DeMille, movie producer. As technical analysts, we learn how to chart and analyze any price action by placing the price action in the perspective of the general market trend and the daily trend. We know how to recognize important trading levels known as support, resistance, and barriers. We have studied chart patterns in mastering the basic skills of looking at the charts. What we are lacking is some form of probability analysis of the potential for such a move as well as its timing. How would you like to be able to project targets for currency moves in any time frame as well as its timing? Join the club because Elliott Wave Analysis does both. You are about to continue on a journey that will take you years ahead of your trading counterparts in the foreign exchange markets. To review, the three mathematical applications on Elliott Wave Theory is comprised of waveform, ratio, and time. Fibonacci numbers are found in Elliott's wave form. How do we use Fibonacci numbers in Elliott Wave Analysis? We have discussed that the basic 5-wave impulse and 3-wave corrective always subdivide into Fibonacci numbers. One complete cycle has 8 waves, and subdividing further, the next cycle has 34 waves, followed by 144 waves. In addition to waveform, Fibonacci ratios are the most important use of the sequence. For example, proportional relationships exist between the different waves. As such, Fibonacci ratios are used to target the ends of moves. These ratios help to determine price objectives in both impulse and corrective waves. Fibonacci ratios are the primary determinant of the extent of price movements in the market, so they are an important adjunct to the Elliott Wave principle. Have you noticed that Elliott waves move and retrace in proportions? The distance from the start of wave 1 to the bottom of wave 4 is often proportionally 61.8% of the whole 5-wave structure, while wave 5 makes up the remaining 38.2%. And look again at the ABC retracement. Waves A, B, and C retrace 61.8% of the whole 5-wave movement. Amazing! We can also apply Fibonacci ratios to Elliott Wave in order to predict the end of a retracement. This means that at 38.2%, 50%, or 61.8% retracement of Wave 1, we can anticipate a possible end to Wave 2. The end of Wave 2 usually forms at the retracement level of either 38.2, 50%, or 61.8%. It should be noted that a 76.4% retracement is not uncommon in highly leveraged markets like Forex and commodities. And what about projections on new motive waves? The inverse ratios, 161.8%, 261.8%, and 423.6% act as barriers where extensions may stop. 161.8% is common. 261.8% is the next natural target. And 423.6% is also often observed. Finally, a third way that Fibonacci sequences are used is in time targets. Fibonacci time relationships exist and provide the time window for terminations of the moves. However, they are harder to predict and these relationships can always be found after the fact.
To predict a time target, count forward from significant tops and bottoms. For example, on a daily chart from a cycle top or bottom. Future tops or bottoms will occur on Fibonacci days 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, or 144 days into the future. The ideal situation occurs when waveform, ratio analysis, and time targets come together. This is a very powerful combination of targeting tools. Now we are going to apply Fibonacci ratio analysis to calculate impulse wave targets. This is where the golden ratio, 0.618, its inverse, 1.618, and the ratio found between alternate Fibonacci numbers, 2.618, come into play. We don't have too much to say about wave 1, other than it is used to target wave 3. Wave 3 targets are 1 times the length of wave 1, 1.618 times the length of wave 1, 2.618 times the length of wave 1, and 4.236 times the length of wave 1. So how do we recognize a wave 3? The easiest way is by its slope, which is usually steeper than that of wave 1. Also, reaching a target of 1.618 times wave 1 is normal for wave 3. But once it goes further than that, it is said to be a wave 3 extension. That's when we consider 2.618 and even 4.236 times the length of wave 1 as a target. The highest volume and the strongest momentum will usually occur in the third wave extension of the third wave. While third waves are not always the longest, once they exceed the length of wave 1, the next target to watch for is 1.618 followed by 2.618 and 4.236. Wave 5 is a multiple of wave 1, or the price difference between the start of wave 1 and the end of wave 3. For example, when wave 3 is extended, meaning that it has traveled further than the 1.618 times the length of 1, it means that wave 5 will likely not be extended. The likely targets for wave 5 when wave 3 is extended are 1 times wave 1, or equality with wave 1, where the length of wave 5 equals the length of wave 1, 0.618 times the length of wave 1, 1.618 times the length of wave 1, and 0.618 times the length of waves 1 to 3. If wave 5 is extended, it can travel as far as 1 times or 1.618 times the price difference between the start of wave 1 and the end of wave 3. Extensions are important in determining impulse wave targets. As you are trading, be aware of the targets and use these levels as support and resistance that when broken, the next level is targeted. When wave 1 is extended, it often measures out to be 1.618 times the length of waves 3 to 5, but this can only be determined after the fact, of course. Another way to use Fibonacci time targets is through ratio analysis. Take Fibonacci ratios multiplied by the number of days in the up or down cycle to find subsequent cycle highs and lows. For example, Assume the current cycle is 30 days. One would project the next cycle using Fibonacci ratios, where the next cycle would end close to 30, 38, 49, 79, or 127 days. The second way to use time targets is to take Fibonacci ratios times the number of days in the up or down cycle to find the subsequent cycle highs and lows. This is a common approach to using Fibonacci ratios to identify turning points in currency markets. As you can see, it requires multiplying the distance in time or days between two important cycle extremes by Fibonacci ratios and projecting the results forward in time. The table shows the Fibonacci ratio in the left column and the number of days in the cycle across the top. Of course, if the distance in time or number of days is part of the Fibonacci sequence itself, then multiplying the Fibonacci sequence number by a 1.618 ratio 
will produce the next number in the Fibonacci sequence anyway. Notice that the Fibonacci extension ratios go from 1 to 1.272 to 1.618 to 2.618 to 4.236. Analysts use two additional ratios that we would like to introduce in this learning object. For retracements, we mention the most common ratios, which are 0 0.236, 0 0.382, 0 0.5, and 0.618. There is yet another ratio which is used, 0.786, which is the square root of 0.618. For projecting wave extensions, we looked at the most common, being 1.618, 2.618, and 4.236. Recall these ratios are the inverses of 0 0.618, 0 0.382, and 0.236. The last ratio which is used is the square root of 1.618 or 1.272. When you draw your Fibonacci projections and retracements on your charts, you may want to include these additional ratios. This is the end of the learning object. Please continue on to the quiz.